Hi friends, hope you enjoyed my previous session that is frequent item set generation theory topic. So if you missed, please kindly watch my previous session that is LH12 or by using above link also you can get the previous topic. So today I'm going to discuss about one of the important topic in entire data mining that is a priori algorithm. So in this session, I discuss why a priori algorithm and uh, I take one example on a priori algorithm. Now, a priori algorithm. So in this session, so I have taken one example on a priori algorithm. So that example taken from softwaretestinghelp.com. Just for reference only I have taken, not more than that. Thanks to softwaretestinghelp.com. Now, so why a priori algorithm? As I discussed earlier in my previous session, that is frequent item set generation. So example, see if you purchase one item, so obviously sometimes you will get, you are going to purchase another product also. So we can call it as frequent item set generation. So example, toothbrush, obviously you are going to purchase toothpaste also. See if you purchase toothbrush and toothpaste, Along with that, you may purchase tongue cleaner also. So I can say that this is uh, one of the examples of frequent item set generation. Now, a priori algorithm is a sequence of steps to be followed to find the most frequent item set in the given database. So obviously, see if you visit supermarket, there are n number of customers may purchase some grocery items, right? So from that data set, you are going to retrieve what are the frequent item sets the customer purchased frequently. So to get that information, obviously we need one algorithm. So one of the important algorithm, one of the easiest algorithm in data mining is to find out the most frequent item set in the given database is a priori algorithm. Now, this data mining technique follows the join and the prune steps. So I can say prune just like simplifying or compressing the data iteratively until the most frequent item set is achieved. So by using this algorithm, we can find out the most frequent item set in the data set. A minimum support threshold is given in the problem or it is assumed by the user. So this is just like assumption only. Now see, example of a priori algorithm so for example support threshold is 50 percent and condense is 60 percent as i discussed about these two terms that is support threshold and condense in my previous session so in this i have taken two attributes that is transaction list of items so here so i have taken t1 to t6 transaction in each transaction, there are few items. So minimum is two transactions, two list of items and maximum is four list of items. So how many transactions here? So obviously T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6 transaction. So for example, in T1 transaction, there are I1, I2, I3 list of items. At the same time, T5 transaction. Now solution. So how to find out minimum support count by using one data set? So this is the formula of finding a minimum support count in the data set. Support threshold is equal to 50%. So in the example I given the percentage of support threshold, right? That is 50%. So now formula is like that. So we have to take number of transaction. So multiply with the support threshold. So 50% means that is 0.5. So multiply with 6. Why 6 here? Number of transaction. 0 0.5 into 6. So that is 3. So see if we, the result set is 3, right? So this is called minimum support count. So what is the minimum support count? 3, right? So in the table 2, here I given item and count. So I1. So in the previous slide, I given list of items. I1. So what is the count here? 4. How do you get these 4? means you have to search the I1 ele element in the given transaction. So T1, I1 count is 1. In the T4, I1 count is 2. 
In the T5, I1 is available, so that count is 3. In the last transaction, that is 3, 6, so I1 is available. Total count is of I1 is 4, right? So next, same way, find out I2. I2 count. Now find out, so T1, I1 is available, count is 1. In the T2, I2 is available, count is 2. In the T3, so there is no I2, right? So in the T4, I2 is available, count is 3. In the T5, I2 is available, count is 4. In T6, I2 is available. Total count of I2 is 5. Same way, find out I5 count in the table 1. Now, in the T1 transaction, there is no I5. In the T2, no I5. T3 count is I5 is available, the count is 1. T4, find out T5, so I5 is available, count is 2. In the last transaction, that is T6, there is no I5. So what is the I5 count? 2. In the second table, so I given like this, so I1 count is 4, I2 5, I3 4, I4 4, I5 2. So this is the table you are going to calculate. Now prune step, we can call it as prune step. Table 2 shows that I5 item does not meet minimum support to is equal 3. So what is the minimum support count is 3. So in the given table, we have to find out a minimum support count is equal to 5. If it is less than 3, see if you get 2 or 1, that is count of item items in the item list. So that we have to remove. So now see, what is the minimum support count? 3. That's the reason I calculated support to threshold. Minimum support count. Table 2 shows that I5 item does not meet minimum support count is equal to 3. So now, so in the, in the table, I5 count is equal to 2. Thus, it is deleted. Now we have to delete that I5 item. So only I1, I2, I3, I4 meet minimum support count. Table 3. So I deleted I5. Now table 3. So I deleted I5. Why? So minimum support is equal to 3. So there I got only 2. That's the reason I deleted I5 item. So now see I1, I2, I3, I5. Now joint step. Third step is joint step. From two item set, from table 1, find out the occurrence of two item sets. So previously, so I count, counted with one item. So now see, so in the table 3, so that is I1, I2, I3, I4. So this is the last step. So now see the first table. So T1 table and T4 table. So this is I'm going to do now. So joint step from two item set. So from this, we have to calculate the two. From table one, find out the occurrence of two item sets. Now, I'm going to calculate like this, I1, I2. So here I'll get I1, I2. Next, I1, I2, I1, I3, I1, I4. I1, I2, I1, I3, I1, I4. Next, I2, I1. Means I1, I2, both are equal, right? Now I don't want to write this I2, I1. Next I2, I3. Next one is I2, I4 here. Next one is I3, I4. Repeated items we should delete so because already so data is available in the data table. Now I1, I2, I1, I3, I1, I4. I2, I3, I2, I4, I3, I4. So we'll get the table 4 here right i1 i2 so next uh, count is equal to 4 so how we'll get this 4 say so again come to table 1 so here is the table 1 table right so now find out i1 i2 is available in the t1 transaction t1 transaction i1 i2 set is available now count is 1 in the t2 i1 i2 is not there right i3 
sorry t3 i4 and i5 t4 i1 i2 is available count is equal to 2 the t5 transaction i1 i2 is available count is 3 next t6 transaction i1 i2 so how many what is the count of i1 i2 so here i got 4 same way find out i2 i4 so now in the t1 transaction i2 i4 not available i2 i4 available in the t2 transaction count is 1 next to i2 i4 available in transaction t4 count is 2 t5 i2 i4 not available in t6 i2 i4 available now count is 3 like that you have to calculate for each and every item set now next step what i what i do is so now find out frequent item set what is the frequent item set of previous slide three right see if we get less than three so what you are going to do so you have to delete that item so here i got two i1 i4 next one is i3 i4 we have to delete it right so final result set is table four so i deleted i mean so i'm going to delete last i3 i4 and i1 i4 next step is prune step table 4 shows that item set i1 i4 and i3 i4 does not meet minimum support count thus it is deleted now you will get the final result that is table 5 i1 i2 4 i1 i3 3 i2 i3 4 i2 i4 that is 3 now join and prune step from third item set from the table 1 find out occurrence of three item set so first first in the table 1 so items 1 so in the second set so item 1 and item 2 so now so next step is that so we have to calculate three item set item set two item set now three item set from the table 1 find out occurrence of three item set from table 5 find out the two item set subset which support minimum support count now see so this is table 5 so here final set is table 5 now find out i1 i2 i1 i3 from first to second i1 i2 i1 i3 so i1 is repeated right so that is the reason i deleted i1 i2 i3 so i1 i2 i3 next i1 i2 i2 i3 i2 is really deleted because repeated i1 i2 i3 next this one to last transaction i1 i2 i4 i2 is repeated now the final is i1 i2 i3 i1 i2 i3 repeated i1 i2 i4 next transaction i1 i3 i2 so already data set items are repeated so in the final we can get the i1 i2 i3 count is 3 i1 i2 i4 count is 2 so we will get this count 3 now find out in the table 1 t1 i1 i2 i3 so i1 i2 i3 available count is equal to 1 next see the transaction 2 i2 i3 i4 not available 3 i4 i5 4 i1 i2 not available t5 t5 i1 i2 i3 transaction is available right in the transaction t5 list of items are available now count is equal to 2 last transaction t6 transaction i1 i2 i3 so what is the count of transactions see in the list of items 3 same way find out i1 i2 i4 now what is the minimum support count here 3 if it is a less than 3 so what i have to do so you have to delete it right that is 2 so what is the final final count three now see we can see for item set i1 i2 i3 subsets i1 i2 i1 i3 i2 i3 are occurring in table 5 thus i1 i2 i3 is frequent so we can see for item set i1 i2 i4 subset i1 i2 i1 i4 i2 i4 i1 i4 is not frequent as it is not occurring in table 5 thus i1 i2 i4 is not frequent hence it is delete right as i discussed earlier so in the final we found that only i1 i2 i3 is frequent